Hey guys, it's Jake from Metalani and I'm here with Nilo from Insomnium. Nilo man, how are you going? Thanks Jake, I'm doing great. We're going to talk about Insomnium coming back to Australia. Um, the first time you guys came down here was a couple of years ago and it took 17 years to get you, finally get you down here and then you're sort of returning two years later. So was the reception you received that first time around that great that you had to get back here as quickly as you could? Yeah, definitely. It was like one of the coolest coolest tours, coolest trips we've done with the band and um, I think everybody agreed that we had to have to get back there as soon as possible and uh, luckily it happened already now in, in two years so let's hope we can make it this kind of some kind of tradition that we get there at least every couple of years uh, it was so so good last time so well, we're really looking forward to it now yeah, excellent. And I mean, I'm sure the Australian fans would love you guys coming down here over a couple of years. But before you guys played down here for the first time, did you ever think that you had the sort of following that you guys have um, in Australia? Um, I think we were really surprised uh, at how many fans there actually was when we got there with The Haunted. And uh, it, it felt like uh, that we were kind of on even terms with The Haunted, uh, even though they were the headliner there, but there was still a lot of Insomnium fans there and who clearly had come there to see us. So it felt really good and we were we were kind of surprised that how many Insomnium fans there actually were in Australia. So it was a, it was a pleasant surprise there in the first time. Yeah, cool. And this time around, you guys are touring in support of the monumental one-track epic Winter's Gate, which has been well-received well across the world. Um, I guess it even reached um, number one in the native Finnish chart. So did you ever expect a one-song album to do so well? Uh, well, of course, we were a little bit nervous that how will how will people react to it. But uh, on the other hand, we knew... We were really happy uh, with the result. It sounded just the way we wanted. So we thought it was a really cool thing and something we wanted to do for ourselves. And after that, everything was just a, a bonus that actually all the people <laughs> loved it. Our fans really liked it and we got great reviews. We got very good chart positions. And uh, so uh, it was kind of a risky thing of course, do one one track album, and uh, but it was something something we thought would be something really special. And we wanted to do it, and uh, usually that leads to uh, it leads to good good stuff when you kind of follow your heart and you you do exactly what you what you want to do, and uh, don't think too much about what the label would be expecting or what the fans would be expecting but just do exactly what you want and this time it paid off and uh, everybody seems to like Winter's Gate and, and I think in a live situation it works really well like people are kind of uh, in some kind of trance when they are, are watching the Winter's Gate and, and the kind of, if we played first People are really like intensively watching it, and after that, if we play the kind of normal, normal set, the older songs, then they kind of wake up and, and start moshing and moving. It's it's really nice to see the crowd reactions when we're playing the Winter Skate. It's been really really cool. Yeah, cool. And we'll get back onto Winter's Gate in a little bit, but I do want to switch back to the tour now. So joining you on the tour um, in Australia and as well as some of your Asian dates is Melbourne's band um, Orpheus Omega. So when the initial announcement came out, I saw a lot of people posting on your social media accounts um, asking about why you guys weren't playing with Bellacore, obviously another great band that had released a similar sort of um, album last year that got a lot of acclaim but um how did the partnership between yourselves and Orpheus Omega come about? Uh, well the Australian promoters are mainly behind this combination now 
and we are really happy with it. Of course, it would have been cool to have Bellacord there as well. They're a great band, but uh, it's usually the the promoters and the agents that are kind of responsible for the for the lineups and uh, that which which band is supporting and and so on. So this time. We are touring with Orpheus Omega, and that's really cool. And uh, let's see if we get to play some shows with Bellacore in the future. It would be equally cool to do that. So, but you have a lot of great bands there. So, so good for you guys. <laughs> yeah, and I'm sure that that's a, sort of a package would be something that a lot of people would like to see. So, I know yeah, that. Yeah. I know that Ville won't be joining um, the tour again this time around. He missed our uh, last tour as well due to his research commitments. And in his place we have um, Yanni Limitainen, um, who's ex Sonata Artica, filling in. But given that most of the band is involved in like various sort of projects, either music or otherwise, is it ever difficult organising tours to make sure that everyone's able to be there? Yeah, it's, it's difficult. Oh, of course, um, and that's the reason why why Billy can't can't come come even this time to Australia and to Asia. And of course, it kind of sucks. But uh, on the other hand, we have to make compromises if we wanna wanna keep on touring. And uh, Billy has his his work. He's very busy there, and it's difficult to get get long holidays from there. So. Um, but luckily, we get Yanni Limatainen with us. He's a great, great guitarist and also an excellent vocalist. So he will deliver perfectly, and he's playing Winterskate with us already in Europe. And we know it's going to be amazing. And the people don't need to worry about that. <laughs> How will it sound? It will be really good. Yanni is, Yanni is awesome. But uh, of course, it's a lot of wheeling and dealing that we get the tours done and find the right time for everyone and get the schedules right. So, of course, I, Marcus Van Halen is really busy with Omnium Gatherum and uh, uh, the drummer Marcus has his day job as well and I have my own own projects and things. So, there's, it's difficult sometimes, but uh, but we are lucky we are able to able to tour and there are a lot of tours coming this year so so uh so we've been lucky and, and somehow somehow we get it working and it's, it's good that we have friends like yanni who can fill in if if for example villa villa can't make it yeah and uh, i mean as you said you've got a lot of tours and he is joining you on the European tour as well, so it's it's good as as you said that you have those sorts of people that can fill in. And if I recall correctly, that's the way that um, Marcus Van Haller actually joined the band, wasn't it? That he was filling in initially when you were a guitarist down, and then just sort of became that part of the band. Yeah, exactly. So it was already like uh, I think two thousand and seven when Marcus was filling in the first time and then in the summer of uh, I think 2009 or 10 he played then several festivals with us and then we kind of got to know him better and and in a couple of years he was in the band so that's how it started with Marcus Van Halea. Yeah cool so I'm going to switch back to Winter's Gate now so it's a monumental album as we've spoken about before it's been really well received and there's so many little intricacies and nuances in it that it really takes a few listens to get through them all so i guess i want to just ask how did a one song project come about yeah it was uh, already a couple of years ago when we were actually preparing the previous album uh, Shadows of the Dying Sun. We were rehearsing the songs before the studio, and uh, and uh, actually we were at Marcus Van Halen's summer uh, cabin, <laughs> uh, rehearsing there, and uh, a little bit wine there during the night and listen to some classic albums. And one of these was was uh, Crimson and uh, By Edge of Sanity. 
and uh, at that point we started talking that it would be really cool to do something something similar that just try to do one really long epic song and that was kind of the starting point for it and then uh, after after a while after the shadows album was released and and everything we kind of returned to that idea and started thinking seriously that should we should we try try this and uh, how would we build a really long song and how would we get it working and everybody was really like excited about the idea that let's do something different now and uh, yeah that's how it started yeah, cool. And I guess uh, you've sort of already answered this um, a little bit, but did you ever think that releasing a one-song album would be a bad idea? Uh, I think we were kind of confident, like, all the way. And, uh, of course, it's important that when we spoke about this to our label, Century Media, uh, they were really supportive right from the start, and they thought it was a cool idea. So... I think after that it was kind of really obvious that we're going to do this now and everybody be- believed in it that it's going to be a cool thing and uh, so of course it was a little bit more exciting than, than usually uh, than what's going to happen now but uh, I think we were confident that we're going to pull it off and it's going to be cool so at least I was I, I trusted all the time that it's going to be really cool and of course in the beginning we were not sure that how long will it be that is it going to be a 20 minute song or, or what but it kind of naturally evolved to this 40 minute length so it was a full album actually and so uh, that, that's how it went yeah cool and I know that Winter's Gate is adapted from one of your very own short stories Talvin Porti um, and that you're also a very avid author that you've um you write a fair bit as um, as well as being a major culture and history buff. So can we expect any more of your stories to be implanted into future Insomnium songs or albums? Uh, let's see. Let's see what happens then. But, uh, of course, I'll be making Insomnium lyrics in the future, of course, as well. And usually they are kind of small stories, like every... Every song is usually a little little story, a tale about something. That's that's how I like to build my my lyrics. Of course, Bill is also doing lyrics, but uh, but then like besides music, there are interesting uh, projects happening, and uh, um, I don't want to talk about them too much before they like come to reality, and uh, there is something to announce, but. Uh, I'm, I'm writing stuff all the time, and it's, I hope that soonish I can I can reveal that something is actually coming out. So, so let's see. Yeah, cool. So, sort of just a watch this space moment with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. So, the final question I've got for you is that I know that Winter's Gate was originally intended to be written as a filler album between your complete albums that you would release. So similar in the way that the ephemeral single was released as a filler between the One for Sorrow um, and Shadows of the Dying Sun album. So does this mean that new Insomnia music might be sooner on the cards than most fans realise? It's a bit hard to say yet because now there's so much, because this became a full album. Uh, even though at first it was intended to be some kind of a mid- middle work, but uh, it it grew, grew to a full full might and became became a full album. So so it, uh, I think realistically it might take it might take two year, two years or something before the next album comes out. But it's a bit too soon to say at this point. There's a lot of tours coming. Uh, all of them haven't been revealed yet. Even for this year, there's still more more tours coming. And um, while we are touring, it's usually kind of hard to uh, compose new stuff. So uh, uh, it will take some time before, before the next album comes out. Yeah. If we are realistic, yes. Yeah, cool. And 
that's what I figured anyway, as you said, that this uh, Winter's Gate did sort of grow into that full album, but given that, yeah, you guys had previously said that it was intended to be a little bit of a filler, I thought there might have been some ideas floating around there, but that's cool. If it's take a couple of years, yeah. it'll take a couple of years. I mean, that's how these things work, so. Yeah, but then let's see if we suddenly work really fast and produce some new killer songs, but... Of course, the standard is high, and uh, we should be making something that is even cooler than Winter's Gate. So it won't happen like like that. So it, it takes some time to, to to make those make those killer songs. So no need to rush anything. Yeah, most definitely. All right. Well, Neil, thanks so much for your time today, and we'll look forward to seeing you when you come down here and tour Australia. Yep. Yeah, thank you very much.